The nuclear catastrophe in Tokai, Japan, is much less well known than the Fukushima accident and was also many times smaller in scale. However, it is primarily remembered because of the horrific and artificially prolonged death of one of the victims. Hisashi Aoki would have died after a few days, if not sooner, from the enormous dose of radiation he received. However, someone gave him an experimental order to prolong his life, and Aoki lived for 83 days, every second of it in unbearable pain. Usually when radiation tragedies are mentioned, the first things that come to mind are the Chernobyl accident and the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, but in fact, the list is many times longer. In this video, I will talk about the accident at the Tokamura nuclear facility in Japan and about Hisashi Aoki, who received a lethal dose of radiation twice and lived, if you can call it that, thanks to the efforts of medics, for 83 days after it happened. Before we face the ethical dilemma of medicine and science, that's at the end, let's examine what happened. The incident took place on September 30, 1999, at JCO's radiochemical plant in Tokai Township. The plant was processing uranium of lower enrichment, not exceeding 5%, and higher enrichment, 18.8%. The uranium had to undergo a purification procedure, so the Japanese Science and Technology Agency established a procedure by which the hazardous stages of the mixing process would be mechanically mixed in a special tank, then the results would go to a buffer tank and from there to a 100-liter sump. Three years before the accident, the cleaning procedure had been changed. Instead of a specially designed tank, the workers mixed uranium oxide and nitric acid in their own hands in 10-liter stainless steel buckets. They decided to eliminate the buffer tank step in principle and immediately added the mixture to the sump. Everything was fine until one day, instead of low enriched uranium, the feed was enriched up to 18.8%. On that day, there were three employees on duty who had no experience with such a high degree of enrichment. As a result, the workers loaded seven buckets of uranyl nitrate into the sump, which was almost seven times the maximum amount allowed by the instruction, and subsequently led to a self-sustaining chain reaction. The Magnitude of the Disaster Auchi, who was adding the last bucket of uranyl nitrate to the sump, partially hovering over it, witnessed a blue flash of Cherenkov radiation, after which two workers near the sump experienced an instantaneous sharp deterioration in their condition. Although there was no explosion, the alarm was triggered by the intense gamma and neutron radiation from the sump, after which actions were taken to contain the accident. The chain reaction continued intermittently for about 20 hours, after which it stopped, thanks to actions to neutralize the accident, 161 people were evacuated. Two of the three employees working that day died due to severe radiation exposure within a few months. If it may seem like it couldn't get any worse, you're jumping to conclusions early. Shinohara, the least injured of the two who received the fatal dose of radiation, was in the hospital for seven months until April 27, 2000. The technician died of lung and liver failure after a long struggle with the effects of the radiation. During his seven-month stay at Tokyo University Hospital, he underwent several skin grafts, blood transfusions, and attempts to prevent cancer with minimal success. However, Shinohara's stay at Tokyo University Hospital was far less painful than what happened to Aoki. 83 Days of Hell on Earth By the time the rescue team was able to remove him from the scene, Aoki had been exposed to 17 sieverts of radiation, more than twice the lethal level. Hisashi had been exposed to the greatest amount of radiation a human being has ever experienced in recorded history. Doctors took microphotographs of his bone marrow and found that his chromosomes were destroyed and his white blood cell count was critical. On day 6, Aoki was placed in a sterile room at Tokyo University Hospital. He needed a stem cell transplant, which had never been done before, so that he could start producing white blood cells again. Sister Aoki proved to be a suitable donor, and it was she who donated the cells for the transplant. After a week in the hospital, the victim began to show the outward signs of radiation sickness, his skin began to peel and fall off in pieces. 
Since his cells were no longer capable of repair, the wounds that had formed were not healing. Soon Auchi began to have difficulty breathing, after which he said, I can't take it anymore. I'm not a guinea pig. Despite medication, he was in severe pain, causing him to be put on a ventilator and then put in an induced coma. On the 18th day, Aoki's white blood cell count returned to normal. It turned out that the transplant was successful, but a week later tests showed that the radiation began to affect the transplanted cells as well. On the 27th day, Aoki's intestines began to melt, and three weeks later he began to bleed. He survived multiple blood transfusions, sometimes up to 10 operations in 12 hours. Significant amounts of fluid, up to 10 liters per day, were excreted through the skin, so doctors wrapped the patient completely in gauze. Blood even flowed from his eyes. Aoki began receiving daily skin grafts using artificial skin, but they did not take root as the muscles literally fell off the bones. On his 59th day in the hospital, his heart stopped three times in just 49 minutes, but he was resuscitated each time. This gave serious complications to his brain and kidneys. At this point, Auchi was on life support. Doctors continued to take life-saving measures, but Auchi died due to more organ failure on December 21, 1999, after 83 days in the hospital. How it all ended One cannot help but wonder if it is legal to subject a person to such torture, moreover, when he himself begs for an end to his suffering. Unfortunately, from the legal point of view, at least at that time, yes. Doctors tried to save Aoki's life to the last, just as the family hoped for a miraculous recovery. At the same time, there is an opinion that the young man had to pass away so painfully, because at some point the process turned into one big experiment aimed at gaining new knowledge in the methods of treatment of people faced with heavy radiation exposure. Auchi's case will be remembered in history as a display of inhuman cruelty for the sole purpose of scientific research. After the accident, which was deemed entirely the result of human error, the Tokamira power plant was fully automated and equipped with neutron monitoring equipment. A year after the incident, six employees were arrested on charges of negligence. One of the six was a third surviving employee who claimed that he forgot or was unaware of the possible danger at the plant. This story was detailed in the book A Slow Death, 83 Days of Radiation Sickness, produced by the NHK television crew. Subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. Write in the comments about what else interesting you can tell about this video. See you in the new video.